welcome to my channel about living in and moving to Denver, Colorado. Today, advice for homeowners in the state of Colorado. Let's get into it. much for watching my channel. I'm Katie Martineau, also known as The Real Estate Gal. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video, which is twice a week. All things about living in the Denver Metro, things to do, places to go, neighborhoods to check out. And like I mentioned, my nickname is Katie The Real Estate Gal. I am a licensed real estate agent in this state. So if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal. So here's my contact information below and I would love for you to reach out, call, text, or email, and let's start a conversation. And in the meantime, I am a homeowner myself in the state of Colorado. I moved here five years ago from Minnesota and just hit my three-year mark for being a homeowner. I've learned a ton, as well as I am, like I mentioned, a licensed real estate agent, so I've learned a ton that way too. So we're gonna be covering five major things as a homeowner that you should be aware of. The very first one is Colorado has expansive soil. I like to call it Colorado clay dirt. There's a lot of elements in the dirt that can cause it to shift and move around. Betonite being one of those minerals. And so if you have any concerns, I'm not a structural engineer, but if you have any of those concerns, I would recommend a soil test to see if it does hold those elements and what the water retention can be because it can cause severe issues with homes. Now, just because that dirt might have those elements doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have structural issues, but it's just something to be aware of. Any home built before 1980, you can probably just guesstimate that the developer didn't do anything to the soil. However, if a home is built and you haven't seen any shifting or settling or any movement at all, within five to 10 years of it being built, you're probably in a clear is a good rule of thumb. Now I found this super helpful article that Nine News put out, and I'll put that in the description box below that you can check out, and it does highlight a lot of these facts that I learned. So homes that were built after 1980, the developer most likely either treated the soil or they may have completely removed the soil and brought in new dirt in order to eliminate shifting and settling. Some developers will even go as far as to putting helical piers in when they are literally building the house to make sure that it is stable. So that article that I mentioned has a really great kind of photo by photo example of what the dirt looks like once you add, or well, what the clay looks like. And then once you add water to it, it expands. And then when it dries, it contracts. So if you can imagine the dirt underneath a home or a commercial building or any type of structure expanding and contracting like that when introduced to water, that can be extremely detrimental. So knowing those things ahead of time is really great for builders and developers to do research on. So just know that the state of Colorado has that dirt. Another area where it comes into play is my garden. <laughs> I am located two miles south of Sloan's Lake. I'm in the Barnum neighborhood and my garden is 11 foot by 11 foot and it has a very dense clay like dirt. There are definitely drainage issues with it. So the first year that I planted vegetables, I planted one zucchini plant and I didn't get a lot from it. Typically one zucchini plant in really good dirt will produce enough zucchini for a family of four for that summer. So the next year I decided to plant three zucchini plants and I got enough yield that one plant in good dirt would produce. So the following year, what I decided to do was add clay buster. So like I said, 11 foot by 11 foot garden, I did the math and I got 15 bags of clay buster dirt in order to break up that clay consistency. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work. I don't know if it was the brand of the product or maybe I just have really stubborn dirt, but for this upcoming season, I'm planning on removing the dirt and bringing in new stuff so that I can plant a garden that will actually produce. Another thing that the dirt also comes into play is on highways. So I had a structural engineer explain to me that the dirt that's under highways is of course dirt, but in Colorado, there are ribbons of clay and they're giant. And so what happens is that contraction and expansion when introduced to moisture. So it kind of tears up the roads a little bit. And then when it contracts, it comes back together, but it kind of heaves the road. And so the most expensive and best fix would be to excavate all of that clay out of the dirt, but that would probably mean destroying some of the highways. And so instead they'll shave off the top almost every year 
after that expansion contraction situation happens. So there's always something to work on with roads for Colorado, unless we can get those really, really expensive fixes that might just solve the problem altogether. When it comes to home ownership, if you have any concerns like that, you can do soil testing in the 30 days that you're under contract. 30 days is most common, but you can do soil testing if that is a concern to you. The second thing to be aware of in the state of Colorado is any home that is built prior to 1972, we are required to give a lead-based paint disclosure pamphlet. And then the person selling or the homeowner, they are also required to say if they know of any lead-based paint that's in the home or not. It's a very easy document. You just have to confirm that you've received it and that you've reviewed the materials. As long as no one is eating the paint, such as small children or animals, and the pamphlet also says pregnant women, as long as they're not eating paint chips, lead-based paint shouldn't be an issue. But that is one of the documents that's signed off on during the home selling or home buying process if the home is built prior to 1972. The third thing to note for homeowners in the state of Colorado is in the Denver area, Denver County specifically, if you want to purchase a home and make it a short-term rental, such as an Airbnb, it does have to be your primary address, meaning you can only have one primary address in Denver. So what some people wanna do is they wanna get five different homes and then Airbnb or short-term rent out those homes. However, Denver has really cracked down on it has to be your primary rent residents. The population is booming in Denver and so they wouldn't want investors coming in and taking over homes that actual homeowners might want to purchase for themselves. The nice thing about short-term rentals is you can really capitalize way more than you can with long-term renters. There's more maintenance but the return is so much higher. But Denver and some other counties and cities around have made restrictions. So for example Denver County has one home can be a short-term rental. The city of Arvada currently you can only have three short-term rentals. So if you're looking for investment properties, which I can help with, know that there are short-term rental restrictions for different areas. So please reach out if you want some resources in that realm. But for long-term rentals, there currently aren't any severe restrictions like there are compared to short-term rentals. Fourth piece of advice for Colorado homeowners is that there are flood zones in Colorado. You wouldn't necessarily think it because Colorado is so dry and can seem like a desert. A lot of people do zero scaping for their lawn so they don't have to waste water on watering grass. It can be kind of tricky to keep actual grass alive in Colorado because the sun gets so hot. We are a mile closer to the sun and then with the dry climate during the summer, dead grass is pretty much everywhere. It gets very brown across the state unless you're strategically watering your lawn and a little bit off topic but there are different times of the day that they recommend watering your lawn so that you can get the most out of it and not be running your sprinkler in the hot daylight hours and having the water essentially just evaporate because of the heat because the greenery is so nice you will see a lot of artificial turf you just definitely want to make sure that it has proper drainage one of the reasons being if you have a dog and they decide to pee on the turf if it just sits there and doesn't have drainage it can really start to smell. So just make sure that it has that drainage or that you're rinsing it off whenever your animal decides to go to the bathroom. But anyway, back to the floodplains. So back in September of 2013, Colorado had a devastating flood and the zone goes from Fort Collins all the way down to Colorado Springs. And this flood just wiped out roads and highways, some homes, people were stranded. It was really drastic. It caused more than four billion dollars of damages over 17 counties. So in 2015, Colorado's legislature passed a funding bill for the Colorado Hazard Mapping Program, which aims to provide mitigation for areas that are prone to future flooding. Now, if you're purchasing a home that's in a flood zone, your insurance company is gonna require that you get flood insurance. So it's an additional cost, it's something to be aware of, and that is something that comes up when you're in the under contract period. But better safe and sorry. Alrighty, fifth and final piece of advice for homeowners in the state of Colorado is our lead pipe 
program. Now there's this really helpful map that I found that highlights where there are lead pipes. There are over 3,000 miles of water mains and Denver water crews install or replace an average of 80,000 feet of pipe a year with a goal of replacing 140,000 feet of pipe a year by the year of 2026. And so what I love about this is it's primarily in the Denver metro area, but Denver is being proactive in this. It's a 15 year program. And as I am a homeowner living in Denver, I know a lot about this program because my house is actually gonna be worked on really soon. So Denver is replacing all of the lead pipes that go out to the street with copper because they realize that lead was leaching into the water from the lead pipes. So what they're doing is they're sending water pitchers out to every single home that's part of this program and it's completely complimentary. And then every six months they're sending a replacement filter. They also give a lot of recommendations as well. So after you wake up in the morning, because the water in the pipes has been sitting there for quite a while, just overnight, they recommend running the water for about five minutes to flush out the water that's been sitting there overnight so that you can get fresh water or I should say fresher water. Now, as I'm going through this process right now, what they did is they sent three jugs out. And so when I woke up in the morning without running any faucets, I filled one of the jugs up, let the water run for about 45 seconds, filled up another jug, and then did the same thing for the third one. And I sent it back to the city. It's not costing me anything for the water pitchers or this test, but they did confirm that I do have lead in my pipes. So anything over one, the pipes are recommended to be replaced. And my house is at about a four or five. So they do replace the pipes for free. And like I said, it is a 15 year program. There's also this map of the neighborhoods and streets and homes that are approved for the program and are going to be going under construction. So my home, the pipes are going to be changing in the summer of 2023. And then they just keep going pocket by pocket by pocket. I don't think that there's too much of a disruption for that, but it's good to know that in these areas, Denver cares about the quality of water. It also has a lot to do with avoiding main breaks, replacing corroded pipes, alleviating water quality problems, increasing available hydrant flow, and improving area delivery. So slowly but surely, they are fixing the problem. If you have any issues that you think would be really helpful for other homeowners to know, please comment below or send me a message so that I can include it in my next video. As a homeowner in the state of Colorado, it would have been awesome to know this information ahead of time. And so that's why I love creating these videos to help provide value and inform you. And as mentioned, I am a licensed real estate agent in this state. So if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, please reach out to me with my information and also hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified the next time I release a video, which will be later this week. Thanks so much and we'll see you then.